Hey, Coach. Um, we spoke with Chris Brown yesterday, and he talked a little bit about his flexing and his attitude on defense. And I was wondering, do you think that energy of his is a little bit contagious? Because it seems like the more the season goes on and the better the defense plays, the more that you know we're seeing players flexing and dancing and really playing like confident defense. Well, I'm glad that you're seeing the things that we practice all the time. You know, we, we spend a lot of time working on uh, flexing and celebrating. So um, I'm glad that's showing up on film and you guys notice it. Now, I, I, in all seriousness, um, we do want that energy and that enthusiasm um, to come through uh, in our players. Uh, they work extremely hard. And, um, you know, when, when plays are made, uh, you know, we're, we're okay with some, some celebration. Uh, we do not want attention to be brought you know, to any one individual. We want it to be a collective team effort uh, and it's called team defense. Um, but uh, I, I want players to play with energy um, and have a little bit of swagger and confidence to them. Chip, go ahead. Chris, I'm not sure what you think of pro football focus, but um, they have your three highest rated defenders this season as Taquan Graham, Joseph Osai, and and Chris Brown, um, you know, your thoughts on, on Taquan you Graham. Me, first you asked me what I think of pro football focus. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to hear your aside on that, but um, you know, I guess talk about Taquan Graham um, in addition to pro football focus um, and what you think of them and what, you know, what he's doing well this season and how you've seen him develop. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at uh, the, my comments to TQ. Um, I think uh, TQ has been a, a solid rock for us on the defensive line all year. Um, he may not show up in the stat sheet like uh, some of the other guys do, uh, but uh, he's done a great job. Uh, he keeps improving every week. Uh, he's relentless uh, in his pursuit of being the best that he can be. You know, he'll be one of the first players on the practice field. He's one of the last to leave. He's going to study film. And uh, he keeps improving because of, of that work ethic and that desire to be the best. And um, he's, he's just Mr. Consistency in there. Is there specifically, like, did he have to, after kind of playing in that four eye and, you know, kind of reading a little bit, what was the biggest adjustment for him at the three technique using his hands and all that stuff? Yeah, there, there was a lot. Um, it, it started just footwork and hand placement. Um, and, and being a more of an attacking player than a, a read uh, and react player. Uh, so, you know, he's had to work on all of those things uh, as well as pass rush. Pass rush is, uh, was something that they all needed to improve on and he needed to uh, specifically. But just being able to align in a three technique, uh, have a different visual key, uh, work on his attacking uh, footwork, uh, his blow delivery with his hands, his pass rush. Taking on double teams is different uh, as a three technique uh, than a four eye. Um, so th there were a lot of things that he needed to work on. And, and um, you know, he wasn't where he needed to be when we started the season, but he's getting a lot closer to it. Anwar, go ahead. Hey, Coach Ash, I'm, I'm curious, you know, seven games uh, in, I'm curious as to what you feel like you've learned, uh, you know, about your defense, you know, here as a, as a first-year coach and, you know, maybe what are some of the things that have kind of stood out to you? Well, um, we were kind of just talking about this today. Uh, we had a, a, a practice yesterday, Tuesday practice, and um, it was probably our best Tuesday practice that we've had all year, um, defensively speaking. I thought there was a lot of energy. Uh, I thought there was great work, uh, great focus. Uh, the, the guys made some plays. They, they celebrated. They really uh, appeared to have a lot of fun practicing and working and, and uh, wanted to get better. Um, and one of the things I, I, I've noticed about uh, our defense right now is the culture that we've created um, is in a really pretty good place right now. It's not a finished product by any means, but instead of guys, you know, complaining about going to practice, complaining about getting extra work, they want it. Uh, they want to go out early and get extra run fits. They'll, they'll stay, stay late to get some extra technique and fundamental work. Uh, they'll run to the ball the way uh, we want them to run to the ball, um, you know, and, and uh, those coach cultural things are, are uh, what leads you to success uh, way sooner than any uh, scheme will. And I'm, I'm really happy with uh, how that's been developed um, within the defense. 
Uh, I think we've got pretty good leadership uh, right now with some of the older guys that have been around. Now, obviously, we have a better feel on what uh, guys can and can't do, and we've adjusted, you know, our scheme throughout the season uh, to to uh, accommodate that. But um, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun to be around these guys. So, um, you know, I've learned a lot about that. You know, just the cultural part of it, uh, the attitude of the players, um, the way it, it's kind of shifted in, in where it's at right now. Um, and it's a lot of fun to go to work and be around these guys. Bob, you're up. Coach, just following up on that a little bit, you, you do have tangible evidence now that your defense is improving over the last, you know, three weeks, four weeks. When did you start to see it? When, when did you see the, the shift in what you were trying to get them to do um, to them actually starting to do it? And do you expect to and do you expect to start flexing as well? Um, you know, I haven't lifted in a while, so I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna, to stay away from flexing. Uh, hopefully maybe next year I, I can get to that point. But uh, right now I'll leave that to uh, the, the players. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I've seen a lot of improvement. The Texas Tech game was probably the one game, obviously, that uh, we, we didn't play very good. Um, didn't coach very good. Didn't play very good. Um, our fundamentals were, were poor uh, from a tackling standpoint. Uh, outside of that game, I've seen improvement in every game. Uh, what I have seen the most, though, is more consistency here uh, recently than what we would have seen in, in uh, you know, the TCU and OU games specifically in, in, in two games that we lost. Uh, we played some really good uh, snaps in those two games. We had some good stretches uh, within those games. But we were too inconsistent and gave up some critical plays uh, that prevented us from, from having a chance to win those games. Um, and I, I take those two losses personally. Uh, we, we had leads at, at the end of those games, and, and uh, we didn't close it out um, And uh, for whatever reason. And uh, here lately, um, we've been able to do that. And uh, that, that's um, you know tangible improvement, that, that we've been able to be more consistent and close games out and make plays when we need to at the end of the games uh, to get that done, uh, which we were not able to do earlier in the year. Brian, go ahead. Chris, how much does it help that, you know, it's you guys aren't just a one man band. I mean, Joe Osai has gotten a lot of attention for, for good reason, but the Marvion's third down blitz, BJ, uh, Chris Brown breaking up passes in the end zone, TQ making plays. I mean, you're, you're getting stuff from a lot of different people. And how much does that uh, boost the overall confidence of the room? Well, it's, it's very important. Again, the only way we're going to be successful is we do it together as a team as a unit, um, you know, you, you, the defense could have one great player. It doesn't mean you're going to play good team defense. Uh, it takes 11 players to, to play good defense. And um, we're not where we need to be yet, but we're, we're getting closer and we're getting better. And as we continue to climb and improve uh, the attitude and confidence of the, uh, the unit c continues to grow. Um, like I said, I think last night's uh, practice was a reflection of that uh, in my opinion, but um the fact that, that there are a number of players that are contributing uh, on Saturdays and uh, making plays in critical situation, uh, it, it does help the, the overall attitude, the confidence, um, the culture of the defense. Kirk, you're up. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris Brown said uh, you, you crack on him frequently about having the little man syndrome. And I wondered if that's something that really motivates him it's kind of an undersized DB. Well, he, he is undersized. I do, um, I get after him quite a bit for a number of reasons, being, you know, 5'9 uh, is one of them. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for such a, a uh, uh, little man, uh, in your terms, um, he is very competitive and uh, he practices extremely hard. He plays with a, a crack on his shoulder, so to speak. Um, because he, he feels like he's got a lot to prove because of, of uh, his size. Uh, but he is really, really competitive. Uh, he's tough, um, and uh, he works really hard. So he's been around here as long as anybody, and um, it's, it's good to finally see here in his, his fifth year that uh, a lot of his hard work is starting to pay off, and, and uh, he's contributing to this uh, defense and this team right now. And w what do you and, and Coach Herman feel like it's kind of held him back, uh, you know, he's just now kind of starting to break out in his fifth year. Uh, I, I couldn't comment on anything from the past. Um, I do know that there's been a history of some injuries, I, I believe, uh, in his past. 
but uh, I, I couldn't comment on anything um, at all that's that, that maybe kept him from, you know, playing as much as he is right now. Has he become one of the leaders on your defensive unit? Yeah, he, he really has. Um, he's been one of the leaders basically since I've been here. I, I don't know. I, I, th I think part of it is just he's been around here uh, uh, more than anybody else, and he kind of feels like it's his time. Um, and he, he wants to go out on a positive note. He wants to leave a legacy here at the University of Texas. He wants to be a difference maker um, uh, on and off the field. And I think he's, he's trying to do that. He got his degree uh, this last spring, uh, which I'm really, really proud of him for, for being able to get that done. Uh, so um, he's in a good place right now. Um, he's probably, he, not probably, I, I'd say he is playing his best football uh, right now. He's got to continue to improve. And help carry us uh, through the end of the season. But uh, I like where he's at. Thanks, Chris. Anwar, go ahead. You didn't unmute me. Um, hey, uh, you so didn't coach, like what you were going to say. <laughs> um, you know, I, Coach, I, I know you guys always preach, like, you know, want to know. But, I mean, your players are very well aware that if you guys win three straight, uh, they can go to the conference championship game. So. I'm curious, how do you balance that? Do you use this, this, this upcoming stretch as a motivator? Do you try to have tunnel vision and act like it doesn't exist? Because your players are well aware of it. I'm just kind of curious as how do you guys approach it? Well, we've gotten to this uh, point right now in the season because we've just focused on daily improvement. You know, uh, we, we talk defensively a lot about using uh, the past um, as a lesson uh, you, that you learn from, uh, good and bad. We use the future as motivation, uh, but the only way that um, you know we're going to get where we want to get is stay, stay present in the moment, and uh, we, we've got to focus on improving daily. Uh, we have made improvements. Uh, we talked, um, I think, uh, you know, in these sessions before, after a couple of losses, how would this team respond? And I think they've responded in the right way because their focus has been on the right thing, and that can't change today. It can't change this week. Um, yeah, everybody knows what's what's out there, but the only way we reach it is being be in, uh, in the moment and, and staying focused on um, having the best meeting and best practice that we can here this Wednesday uh, and get ready to play our best on Saturday. That's it. If, if our focus is on anything else than that, uh, we're going to get tripped up. Chip, go ahead. Chris, what uh, specifically did y'all do to work on the, the pass defense in the, in the off week and what have you seen from Kansas? Well, um, you know, from a pass defense standpoint, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, sometimes when you give up a pass, everyone says it was pass defense. No, it's not. It's fundamentals. Uh, it, you know, we may not have leveraged the ball the right way. Uh, we might may have missed a tackle. Um, someone didn't match a route uh, the right way. Um, you know, we we've used every single uh, bye week, and this is probably uh, a benefit of. Um, just 2020 in the way it is with the dead period, we could not go out on the road recruiting during a bye week this year. So uh, it, it's honestly been great because we've been able to spend more time with our players during a bye week, uh, connect with our players, develop our players, watch film with, uh, with our players, practice with our players, things that we normally would not get to do on a bye week. So each bye week we've gone through the, the way the season has been set up and we've gone back and self-evaluated the previous three games, you know, and, uh, we did that this this past bye week, and we looked at all the things that we were doing well. We looked at the things that we have struggled with, and our practices in the bye week defensively were set up to try to work on the things that we have struggled with, because each week uh, we get attacked the same way. Uh, until we you know take it off uh, the film and eliminate it, the, the next team is going to continue to do it. So we spent a lot of time uh, on uh, leveraging the ball on the perimeter. Uh, we had some issues against West Virginia with, with some of the quick screens on the outside. Uh, we worked on, continue to work on tracking the near hip and our tackling. Uh, we worked on some of our underneath pattern matches uh, that uh, we've struggled with at the linebacker position. Uh, we've worked on, you know, the finishing better on, on deep balls uh, with the DBs. So uh, we've done a little bit of all of that. Um, and I think, again, it, it's kind of a, the value or I guess the benefit of uh, the, the dead period right now in recruiting that we've been able to utilize the bye weeks more so than any time in my career. And, um, I don't know what the future will look like when we get out of this uh, pandemic, but um, I, I'd sure like to be able to have that opportunity as we go forward. And Kansas, what um, stood yeah, out? Yeah, Kansas, um, obviously the, the, the 
natural thing would be to look at their record. Um, and and uh, I know what it is. Everybody knows what it is. But uh, it's going to be a challenging game uh, to go up to Lawrence, Kansas. And uh, it's supposed to be raining. It's going to be cooler than, than what we've played in. Um, uh, you know, just that, that, that part of it alone is going to be a, a challenge. Um, the quarterback is a runner. Uh, he makes a lot of plays with his feet. Um, some of the things they do in the pass game are some of the things that we've struggled with uh, in the last few games uh, that we are, we're going to find out if we've got them cleaned up or not. Uh, otherwise, they will expose us. So um, we've got to just continue to go and uh, whoever we play and wherever we play and we got to continue to focus on playing better. Got time for two last ones, Chris and then Bob. Chris, you talked about how this team is focused on the day to day, not looking long term with getting to the Big 12 championship game and how you feel like every game you guys have improved and you had those that that one bad game and that bad stretch. But just how given where that where this defense was against Texas Tech and TCU and OU to where you guys are now coming off three straight wins and a bye going into this final stretch, how different do things feel with this defense and your group now versus when you guys had those struggles early on in the season? Well, I mean, I think it gets back to the cultural aspect of it. Uh, that, that's where we're improved more so than anything. Um, uh, look, I mean, if anybody thought I was going to be able to come in and just wave a magic wand and all the issues that the defense has had in the past were going to be gone without spring practice, um, you know, that, that pro you know, as much as I wish that would have been the case, that probably wasn't realistic. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't. And uh, we just, by the nature of the schedule that um, was put in front of us early on, we played some pretty good teams out of the gate. You know, the offensive uh, 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 part of the, those teams were, were pretty productive. And uh, we weren't where we needed to be. Um, that's just what it is. And, uh, you know, our focus was on the process and, and the long game here and keep working every single day to improve, you know, the fundamentals and, and the execution. And that's what we've done. Uh, but uh, as well as improve the culture of the, the guys on the defensive side. And uh, that's where I'm probably most pleased is the cultural improvements have led to the execution and fundamental improvements on the field. And uh, as long as we've got an environment where these guys enjoy coming to work every single day with the right attitude and the right focus, we're going to continue to improve. And it's going to be a place that hopefully a lot of recruits want to be a part of because they know they're going to get developed and coached and uh, they're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Last one, Bob. Yeah, and Chris, just just kind of on that note, you, you talk about the cultural aspect of it. Is that what what gets your guys in the right place mentally when you are playing a team that's zero and six, and they know the record and they know the the history? I know it's these last few games have been close with Kansas, but but what is it, and what is your technique in in teaching them um, when you go through a week like this? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the the culture that you've created carries you through uh, everything: the good times, the bad times. Um, you know, it, it keeps your focus uh, on the right things. Um, and it, it keeps your focus on trying to play the best that you can play, regardless of who you play. And that, that's really been our message uh, since I've gotten here with the defensive guys. That's all I can speak on is the defensive guys. It's just uh, consistent, constant messaging uh, about that and how important that is. Uh, and I, I think really right now, I, I feel like our players have bought into that. Uh, they believe in it. Um, and that's led to us improving uh, the way that we have. Um, so, it's just, it's constant. I mean, it's every day talking about something uh, around our culture and, and what's important for us to continue to improve. Um, and uh, again, our, our guys are listening. Coach, I, I know you've only been here for less than a year, but um, in that time, what's it been, what's, you know, overall, what's it been working like with Sam Ellinger? And since next week might be the last time he plays at a home crowd, what do you think his legacy as a Longhorn quarterback is like? Well, it's been a it's been a really awesome experience so far in in Austin and and being able to work with an elite uh, quarterback such as Sam, um, all that he brings to the table, it's been unique. Uh, at the same time, because of his experience, wanting to draw from that as a coach, and um, there's been you know our communication has been a two way street and trying to get him more confident and and. Uh, and, and, you know, he's a, he's a player that's already confident in what he does and, and just try to enhance him. And, and uh, the process has been a lot of fun. It's been uh, very enjoyable. I really enjoy his personality. I think we have a great quarterback room as a whole. I, I think all of those guys have a good rapport. And uh, that's, that's very important to have. And, and he's, uh, you know, he sets the temperature every day with his, with his demeanor, with his attitude, and, and with his leadership skills. 
you know, so that's very important to have in that room. And um, he's a he's a guy that's um, very stable and very in control of his emotions. And that's really important as well with with all of the adversity that you can face with football and, and what it all entails to have a guy that rides the waves emotionally, the ups and the downs that that, you know, you have to coach that and you have to be aware of that. And so there is none of that. And, and the best thing about coaching Sam is that the younger guys get to see and model um, how he prepares, um, how he gets his body right, how he gets his mind right. And so there is no better um, teacher than having a guy like Sam and, and just follow his and just model his behavior. And that's the best teacher that you can have. And I've reinforced that, you know, and and not to blow smoke up up Sam or anything like that. It's just what's real. And I told those guys, I'm not here to praise anybody or to give anybody any undue um, compliments. But what the fact is, is that you guys would be foolish if you weren't to watch him closely on a day to day basis from what he does and how he prepares and that you should be taking that same process with you. You know, that's the emphasis with the young quarterbacks, you know, and um you know, every day can be can be an, an opportunity to improve, and you bank that improvement every day. Every day you can take that meeting or take the information you learn, and you build on that. You bank it. It stores. And even though you may be redshirting, right, you may be redshirting this year, those meetings, time after time, after mental rep, after note-taking, all of those things, those all add up, and it'll make for a more prosperous redshirt sophomore year or maybe your junior year, or wh whenever you get the opportunity um, to produce, all of those things add up over time. So um, I hope I hope that uh, that answers your question. Chip, go ahead. Mike, <clears throat> Mike, can you, um, we haven't talked to you since the uh, West Virginia game. Um, B. John Robinson went over 100 yards. Can you talk about what you're seeing from him and when it looks like he's a guy with a hot hand like he was against West Virginia. Uh, do you guys adjust maybe the idea of rotating uh, backs every other series? I know Bijan's been getting a couple series and then the rotation starts, but um, can you take us through that process and, and how, how it adjusts when you see a guy getting a hot hand? Sure. I mean, it's, it's, um, not real complicated. I mean, obviously, if a, if a guy's heating up and, and feels the rhythm, you want to continue to, to get the ball in his hands. Um, that's not rocket science, surely. But at the same time, I think Coach Drayton needs a lot of credit because he's managed it the whole way. And when you have a young guy like that and you play him too fast, too early when he's not ready, you can uh, disrupt the development. And so he's, he's done this before. This is in his first uh, rodeo. So he's been masterful at his management of that room. At the same time, we got to continue to keep guys fresh and rotate. That's important. And how his progression has been, Bijan, uh, that you asked, it's it's come along um, steadily. Um, that's the word that I would use. It's been steady improvement um, and vision and seeing his re keys and being able to cut and sync up with the offensive line blocking has been most critical. And that takes time. So you know, it's not built in a day. And, and if we had a spring ball and extra practices and more scrimmages, you probably would have seen it earlier. But, you know, it is what it is. And we're here today. And there's been steady improvement with him and his production. And Coach Drayden has done a great job, man. Jeff, is, that, you're up. Is, the, is the vision part of it? Is that the, the biggest thing you've seen from him in terms of how to? Yeah, I'd say so, yes, sir. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Coach, with uh, with Brennan Eagles, uh, you know, Brennan was the guy going back to the spring. He was vocal about wasn't sure if he was going to play or not or sit out, but you, know, you get him back. And uh, I know, you know, the production hasn't been, you know, robust for him in, in terms of, of numbers, but it seems like the consistency with him is starting to be there game by game. Have you noticed just kind of a, a growing consistency with Brennan at all from a game to game basis and, and even day to day in, in practice when you're with him? I have. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with with uh, where he's at in a 
mental framework and, and uh, his production, again, has been more steady and continue, you know, continuing to improve. We hope that continues to trend in the right direction. But it's, it's, he's, he's one of those guys that is, uh, he, he cares a lot about the game. Um, he has a lot of pride in what he does. So you get his best effort on Saturdays. And, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we continue to uh, get him to, to practice very hard, and which he does. He practices with tremendous effort. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, his best football is still ahead of him. And I think uh, he'll continue to make strides and make improvements and um, very, very high ceiling for that young man. Anwar, go ahead. Hey, uh, Coach, um, you know, Sam talked about, and when you look back at some, some of the film, just kind of missing some throws in the, in the previous game. I'm curious as to how do you work on the, you know, the accuracy uh, with Sam? Uh, and my other question is, can you just talk about the development of the quarterbacks behind him? I'm curious how you know, Casey, you know, Hudson and Jaquindon, uh, how that, that development has been going as well. Yes, sir. How do you develop accuracy with your quarterback? Um, you practice and you practice and you try to simulate as many real game situations as possible. Um, so incorporating different types of drills um, help you in your accuracy. And, and we do certain drills not to get too, um, you know, quarterback uh, lingo with you. We do, we do some, some drills that, help him and help all quarterbacks develop the accuracy and, and it develops them a sense of confidence. Um, and what you want to do is help them with their anticipation uh, and help them with real movements, right? You want to want to try to incorporate as many drills as you can to make the game, to simulate the game, I should say. And so we like to say that we don't do one drill that you can't see on Saturday afternoon. When you put on the game tape, you should be able to see your drill work within that game. Now, not every game will have a run-up drill or an Elway shuffle or whatever you are working on, but you try to simulate that and you try to make as many awkward throws in practice as you can. With along that, along with that, excuse me, you cannot overdo those drills to where one, they're too mechanical, or two, now they start to wander because everything that you're doing is an awkward throw and they have a clean pocket and they're making an awkward throw pass and they don't necessarily need to do that. So you, you have to be careful with your, um, I don't know, inventory of drill work and make sure that it's, you know, the right ratio of, of every drill that you're trying to accomplish. Um, you want to try to be proactive. So you don't want to sit there and see Saturday game tape and say, oh man, now, now since he made this mistake, we need to incorporate this drill. Well, you should be doing that drill before that mistake happens. So you have to try to analyze that and, and, and get in front of that deal. Um, but uh, the development of the rest of the room um, has, been, has been awesome, I think. It's been a lot of fun. The hard part when you talk about development of younger guys is how do you get them game reps? Because we all know that quarterbacks can look great in practice. And then in games, when the lights come on, it can be a different deal. Um, so that is the challenge, and it's hard to prepare uh, the backup, let alone two and three younger quarterbacks under your backup. So we do have a, a period for the younger guys to develop, and obviously the backup's getting prepared. And so we are doing the best we can to try to simulate those games, those game situations. And um, But, you know, they, they, they each are – in my mind, improving uh, both mentally and physically to pick one guy out and single him out, I think is unfair because I believe the improvement is, uh, is, is with all of those guys in, in that room. Kirk, you're up. Yeah, Mike, uh, do you expect uh, either Wiley or Brewer to play or are you going to do it depending on Malcolm Epps or, and how much could this limit your game plan? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, Kirk, I'm sorry, but I'm going to let Herm talk about all, all personnel issues. That's why you, you hear from one guy and, and no mixed messages. And can you talk about Epps and the yeah, just, sure. does this limit you to the fact they have been injured? Well, any injury, you know, and any shortage um, is, is going to uh, impact you. Um, mm -hmm. One, you know, what, what personnel are you now able to line up in? And, and obviously, you know, you still have to have a contingency plans because somebody can get hurt within the game. So you don't want to be shackled and, and being a bunch of 
whatever personnel you're in, say if we were in two tailbacks and all of a sudden we get a, uh, an ankle by one tailback and half the game plan has to get thrown out. Now you're sitting there scrambling. Um, so we have to make sure that we're staying within our system. We feel, you know, 11 personnel is, is you know, uh, going to be the majority of what we do, you know, and, and you know, how much 12 depends on the health and, and the schemes and the matchups that we uh, go against each week. But you sure as heck don't want to, uh, you know, pigeonhole yourself and, and um, be caught if in case another injury happens on game day. That's the challenge. Chris, go ahead. Mike, the offense the, these past few games has seemed a little up and down, but you're still able to get the win, score score more points than the other guys, which I know is the goal. Obviously, you want to work on some of the consistency with that, but what does it say that this offense, even if it doesn't always look pretty, is able to find a way to get it done? And, and how pleased are you with the fact that they're doing enough to still get the wins, even if they're not doing it on a consistent basis like you want to see? Yes, Chris, that's a great question. And um, the improvement uh, ha have to be made. and We have to have more consistency on this side of the ball. There's no question about that. Um, but, but what you refer to, to me, Chris, refers right to or correlates along with uh, leadership on the offensive side of the ball, um, the belief in the system, the belief in the coaching staff, the belief in the culture here at Texas. Um, you, you, if, you, if you have adversity and then – with, with the emotions and, uh, you know, the individuals that may get frustrated, um, the tighter the situation, and when you're not playing well, a lot of things can fracture at that time. And when that happens, you can kiss a goodbye. We haven't done that. We haven't flinched, and our guys are together. Um, they're a very cohesive group that believe in one another. Nobody gets down. They stay positive. And, uh, you know, that speaks volumes to the leadership. You know, that speaks volumes to the culture. In my mind, you can't win those gritty games with having, um, you know, wayward thoughts or poor emotional decisions, impulsive decisions. Um, you've got to be solid and you got to stay that way. And it can't be up and down on the, on the uh, sideline. We can't be worrying about egos and trying to manage that when we're thinking about what plays we need to call, what adjustments need to be made. So that all factors into it. I think that's the biggest reason. And we're tough. Okay, we're a tough unit, and, and we don't quit, and we stay together. That's, that's the biggest thing that you can have as a football team. And now we got to worry about – now we concern ourselves as coaches. For me, how do we produce more? How do we produce more efficiently and consistently? Chip, you're up. Mike, one more thing on, uh, on Bijan. How is he, in all the areas, not carrying the football? Um, let's pick up the things, the, the dirty work. Uh, how would you rate his uh, progress there? And um, where, how do you think this team is doing in terms of the finishing blocks across the board? I don't think there's a problem with uh, finishing blocks. Um, I think I can always, we, we can always talk about improvement there. I, I don't think we're ever satisfied with, with where there's always improvements to be made. We can always hustle and, and, and really strain. Um, and, and we'll coach that every day, the strain and the finish. And the, the, the first part of your question referred to um, Bijan and, and his overall game. You know, he's very good out of the backfield. Um, clutch catch uh, to finish the game on the last ball game. You know, he, he can, he's got really good hands, ball skills. Right. Um, he runs good routes when he's asked to. He's, he's disciplined with that. Pass protection, again, I'll, I'll use the word steady, steady improvement there. Um, you know, not where he needs to be. Um, and again, it goes back to eye discipline. I know vision when we talk about when you get the ball in your hands, vision on the run, but there's also vision pre snap. You know, who are you keying that free safety and blitz? Are you keying the mic? Who, you know, where are your eyes at to give you indicators? of certain types of rotation that indicate certain types of blitzes, what's the front, what's the ID, et cetera. So getting better, I think steady is the, the same word that I used in run game, I'm gonna stick with it. Time for two last ones, Jeff and then Kirk. Hey, Mike, with the offensive line specifically, uh, it, it felt like that group played maybe as well as they had all year against West Virginia. I don't know if you got that 
uh, feeling after watching the tape. But when you talk about consistency on offense, how imperative is it that that consistency, stacking one good day, one good game on top of a deck, how imperative is it that it starts with that group up front? I think it's it's huge. Um, and what you're referring to really is the is confidence. Uh, you're, you're gaining confidence uh, with each and every block, with each and every series, with each and every game. Um, th- that group's building confidence, and uh, that's a good start. And it, and it continues to build, and you get a lot of momentum. And uh, those guys are feeling good about themselves right now. And, and uh, you know, Coach Hand is doing a heck of a job with those guys. And so, you know, we just – on to the next game. You know, you can't sit here and pat yourself on the back too hard because you got another one. And then after that, you got another one. And so you got one day at a time and work to improve. And it's just about the process, you know. So it's good to see our guys gaining some momentum and playing well up front. And uh, I do agree with you. Well, guess West Virginia was a very good ball game, but that's long been past now. We got to move on to the Kansas. Last one, Kirk, go ahead. Muted, Kirk. Mike, sorry about that. You've been around some really good quarterbacks. Uh, I'm curious how adept you think Sam is at reading defenses and how often he, you know, goes to his third read. Yes, sir. It, he's he's the best that I've had at um, diagnosing defenses um, from being able to to see something that they're in that we didn't even see as coaches. Um, He's been very well versed. Uh, it, it's a lot of reps, you know, but it also takes um, some some savvy, you know, to see a linebacker's demeanor or a safety lean. He points things out on film study that is unique. You know, he sees things in a different uh, in a different way, a different angle, and um, he brings that a lot to the table as far as his ability to diagnose the defense. And then his progressions um, need to continue to improve. Um, there and really trusting and anticipation, right? Trusting and anticipating um, and being able to just cut it loose. You know, I, it, with him, it seems like sometimes we play more efficiently when we're down by 20 at that position, you know, and we have to take, uh, you know, the mindset that, hey, we got we to gotta cut it loose at the same time. We have to be responsible with the ball. So there's a lot of give and take with that. If you put too much on the quarterback and, hey, man, you know, we really need to cut it loose and this mentality, we got to go, go, go. Uh, we're down by 21 mentality to start the game. Well, your turnovers may pick up. Right? You mm-hmm. may turn the ball over a little bit more. So he, he's got to feel comfortable with, with, with his decisions. Um, he's done a really good job taking care of the ball his whole career. And so we don't want to screw that up. I know that. Um, but, uh, you know, his progressions, he understands um, every read. He understands all the read keys. Uh, rarely makes uh, any any mental mistakes or any MAs, as we call them, missed assignments. So he's on point. Um, but continuing to rep and, and uh, be even better and more efficient is what we have to do. That's our job. Is he audible very much, Mike, in a game? Oh, I, I haven't counted them all up, but there's been, there's been uh, several this year. Mm-hmm.